this video is going to be about the B side of all grain brewing. So I'm basically going to be running through the kind of off camera methods and processes that I go through whilst making a beer. It's mainly intended at people who are just starting off at all grain brewing or somebody who thinks they're not ready for all grain brewing, but they really are. It's yeah. I feel that most of my brew days go pretty smoothly using these methods. So I don't prep anything beforehand. And whilst the brewing equipment is doing its thing, I get on with other stuff. So the format of this video, I'll try and put like timestamps um, and gaps between what steps I'm in. So I'm hoping not to film any of the brew footage itself because um, it's kind of irrelevant for this video because I just want to show what I do whilst other bits are going on. So as you saw from that um, quick intro, I haven't prepped anything. Still got my fermenter here, upside down, drip drying. Grain father's not prepped, water's not hooked up. Instead of cutting back when I'm mashing in, I'll start sharing straight off what we do to uh, get the ball rolling. I'm gonna get soaked for this thing in the morning. any water left in the uh, hosepipe system for a few days so now the uh, grain father has got the water in it it's coming up to temperature it's about 20 degrees we need to get it up to 65 but that's about the brew day that's irrelevant <laughs> the next steps we need to do is weigh out the grain whilst we're waiting for this and sort out the water additions. Some people, including myself in the past, would put the water on to preheat in the morning and weigh out the grains the previous day. Now to me, you're spending just as much time brewing, albeit you're prepping the day before, so your total time is probably going to be the same. Food for thought. That's all the malts done. I'm at 40 degrees. Plenty of time to sort out the water additions. Malt bags away, still need to uh, vacuum seal these, but I'll do that at the same time as the hops. Currently at 45 degrees, water additions. I'm going for a good ratio of sulfide to chloride to make it a dry beer. So here's my water additions for no other than the vacant gesture. And big thanks to Harry for sharing the recipe with all the community. I'll put a video to I put a video. I'll put a link to his video in the description below. Let's get the drug dealer scales out. Acid. Don't judge. the additions in, just some lactic acid, that's close enough, happy with that, temp check, we're at 52 degrees and we're done with measuring out the grain, measuring out the water additions and now probably go and grab a coffee. So 
so you can't really get a more chilled out start than that, I don't believe. Greenfather is now at 65 degrees, ready to mash in. So I'll catch up with you after the mash, which is kind of the opposite to how I normally do vlogs. So we're mashed in, set the timer for an hour. The next step is obviously to sparge. Um, sparge tank is currently empty. In effect, we've got an, an hour now between the mash starting and the sparge starting. So we're gonna fill up the sparge tank with the required amount of water, get it into position ready. That Fire that up then so that can reach the required temperature and just keep it steady at that. Then we can dish out the hop additions in readiness. We need to try and get into the uh, Tupperware cupboard as well, that's gonna be uh, an event. And then just reseal the hop bags and the little um, speciality malt bags as well. And just get everything lined up, ready for you to do the sparge. And like I said, that's gonna take me 20 minutes to sparge. Um, but again, that, that that's free time for me, but most. But I appreciate a lot of people probably won't have that sort of system yet. But um, yeah, take the opportunity when you start the mash to when you start the sparge to do all of your other weighing ready for the boil. Guys, apologies um, for some reason the GoPro didn't capture that, but I've basically weighed out the hops. I'm gonna be dry hopping with mosaic as well, so I've left it over there, so when I'm repacking all of this stuff with the vac sealer up there. I'm gonna be pre-packaging the dry hops uh, so there's no faffing about with weighing scales. We can just open the right pack and dump it into the fermenter as and when. And also to go with that, we're gonna have some Irish moss as well. So time check is 33 minutes left of the mash. So take this opportunity now to Seal these bags, or reseal these bags rather, and weigh out the dry hops. We've resealed the malts. 17 minutes left of the mash. Reseal the malts. We've resealed the Challenger. Go to the freezer. And these two mosaic, dry hop one, dry hop two they can go into the freezer as well. We've got a head start on tidying up, haven't we? Well, these can go to the binage. How long's left? 16 minutes. Now the sparge water is up to temp, so I've just knocked that off for the time being. Leave that as it is. I don't recommend moving that when it's full. That could have been disastrous. Nice and slowly. And there she goes. Whilst that's doing its thing, I'm gonna ramp the temperature up to 98 degrees. So that way when there's 75 degree sparge water coming into the top, it's going into the kettle and that kettle will keep on topping up the heat to that 75 degree water while well, it's ramping up from 65 now anyway but then it just it kind of shortens that time that little bit more this has got a quite a bit of steam whack the fan on so we're ready for the boil we've already sorted out our hops and irish moss etc um, now we need to concentrate on sanitization uh, ready for the cold side after the boil so I'm gonna start off with a fresh batch of star sun. I don't normally do that but it's it's overdue and just sanitize the bucket and any other equipment that I'm gonna be using on the cold side. Now three quarters of an ounce 20 years. Let's do it. Should do it. Update on this, so we've got 
six and a half litres left to sparge via that and we're at 82 degrees that should be close enough to 98 degrees by the time the sparge is done plus another 10 minutes for any other drips to come through sanitize the bucket I hope the valve is shut yep I think I'm going to be buying um, another one of these really like it really like it so much easier than fermenting in the plastic buckets and dicking about with the uh, auto siphons. Just one less thing to go wrong, isn't it? Fresh star sand. Star sand. So get a fresh batch into this. Dump this off. So you can see, if you were to do all this prep work beforehand, rather than during brew day, it would add so much additional time. Just quite enough. One of the jars I'm going to be using for the blow off tube. Sanitize that. The bodged blow off tube. Stay in there for a bit. What else? Tilt hydrometer, that can jump in. And we've got four and a half litres left and we're at 86 degrees. Plenty of time. After 10 minutes of thinking about, I found it. Right. And that's about it in terms of sterilization. Now we've got the sparge has completed, more or less. But we're at 89 degrees. So I'm gonna leave the bucket on there to catch all the drips and to release any drips into the boil and then we'll probably take it off um, just before we get to the um, hot break and stir it in there's no more drips so i'm going to pop this outside let it cool down for a bit and uh, give the bottom plate a scrape we've arrived at the boil dumped in the 60 minute edition hops now there's nothing else to do until 10 minutes before the end, so we've got 50 minutes to kill. So in that 50 minutes, I'm going to be cleaning anything to do with the mash. So some bits and pieces in there that need cleaning. Fuck off, wasp. Fuck off, wasp. Close one. Um, and obviously the. Um, the mash basket itself after I've given some to the chickens obviously Chilling the wort down from 75 degrees at ended up as um, to 22 at the moment, flowing into the SS brew bucket. Now the remainder of the video is just going to be me cleaning out the um, boil kettle and just doing my different rinses with the PPW type of chemical and star sun etc etc so don't worry if you don't want to hang about for that because i wouldn't i hate cleaning but hopefully my b side of all grain brewing has been helpful um, so yeah before you leave give us a thumbs up but if not well done for staying for the outro and there we are brew day is done time to strip down the boil kettle and give it a good clean so I've taken out the filter. I'm going to be decanting this into a spare bucket. Now the reason I do that in here is because I've already got my hose pipe. Um, so I can do everything in here and then just dump that as and when. And then just want to give this a 
good scrub with clean water, dump it, and then chuck some PBW, OxyClean, anything like that, into the system, oh, and get some cold water running through the chiller first as well. But yeah, we'll go through it, we'll go through it. Right, so these go to the cleaning pile. Excuse the noise if you can hear out the back there's um, tractor cutting the grass in the field, so it gets a bit noisy. Ow, ow, ow. So you can give this a quick rinse. Give that bottom plate a quick rub. Woohoo! Push water through the pump and then through the chiller. Pump on. Here we are, clean water coming through that. So we haven't got any water floating about in the system. And now we can chuck some PVW in. Clean it. bottom put the temperature up to I go 45 degrees connect the hose and then just recirculate until it gets to 10 so whilst that's been coming up to temperature I've cleaned the filter basket holder and saw this on uh, Gary James's video uh, wow 18 months or so ago Got myself some gauntlets, so even though this is coming up to 45 degrees, I no longer have to burn my hand whilst cleaning around the edges and the bottom plate and putting the filter back on. They look very ominous. And they're supposed to be heat proof as well. I haven't tried them yet. This is proper breaking bad, isn't it? The best way I've found to do this, colander. So everything can go in the compost. Any big bits can go into here. And there we have it. Right, we're more or less at temperature. Let's put the cowherders on. And give these a try. Will they work? Yeah, they're not very dexterous. Let's give it a scrub. So that's all. Um, had a wipe down with the PBW. I'm going to install this. And then put the grain basket in and leave it for about 10 minutes. And inside the grain basket, we have all the components. Now we can simply move this out of the way. Scales. Simply drop it in. Then give this a rub down. A lot of rubbing going on. Leave that for 10 minutes. Decant it into another bucket. Quick rinse with Starsan. Then we're done. Done. Further up. So just let the star sand pump all the way through the system and out. I'm not going to leave it there or heat it up there. And I'll be back once this has uh, cycled through. There we are. So that is my process of trying to streamline or maximize the time at a brew day. The time is, time is 2.30. As I start this, 9am maybe, five and a half hours from set up, warming up to clear down. I don't think that's too bad at all. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's 
this is aimed towards people who don't think they're ready for the leap into all green or um, somebody who get, get into a, uh, a faff or a panic or a massive mess whilst they're brewing, which I have done in the past and it's taken a few brews to get to this process. Now, you've got to do what works for you. Now for me, or this method, works best for me. If you do have any suggestions for other people watching this video, put them in the comments box below. Uh, that might help other people out as well, and it'll just be a good, a good resource, I think, and take the um, take all grain brewing off the pedestal to a bit more manageable and realistic level. So, like I said, I hope that was useful. I got a number of videos lined up, so hit that subscribe button if you want to see any more. One of which may be a vlog of the London Craft Beer Festival. That is next weekend, which is the 8th of August, I think. Yeah, the Friday kickoff session. So it's myself, my lovely wife Gemma, my mate Craig, and we're meeting a bunch of brew tubers down there as well. That's going to be absolutely epic. Absolutely epic. The third year running, so... Yeah, really, really looking forward to that. And if you go in, just pop by, say hello, introduce yourself. And yeah, let's have a laugh. Let's have a few beers. Yeah, <laughs>